We've got some breaking news just into CNN, an update from the courtroom where the judge overseeing E. Jean Carroll's defamation case against Donald Trump has threatened to kick the former president out of the room based on his behavior. This is just coming from uh, our team inside the courtroom. Judge Lewis Kaplan warned President Trump previously uh, against disruptions in court as E. Jean Carroll was testifying about her sexual assault, about the damage that it caused her reputation, Trump was heard in the courtroom repeatedly saying things like it's not true, also saying this is a total con job. In response, Judge Kaplan stopped the proceedings and warned the former president he would kick him out. That's right. Her lawyer was complaining to the judge about hearing him say these things, and the judge said, quote, Mr. Trump has the right to be present here. That right can be forfeited, and it can be forfeited if he is disruptive, which what has been reported to me consists of. And if he disregards court orders, Mr. Trump, I hope I don't have to consider excluding you from the trial. Trump then, according uh, to our observers there, threw his hands up in response. The judge said, I understand you're probably eager for me to do that, and it's pretty amazing. Uh, it's pretty amazing what Trump replied. With. Yeah, the reply from Trump, apparently to the judge threatening him to kick him out of the room. Trump saying, quote, I would love it. The judge in response saying, I know you would. You just can't control yourself in this circumstance, apparently. The parties then left the courtroom for lunch. That's right. Let's bring back in Misty Maris to talk a little bit about this. Uh, this is drama playing out very much in the courtroom. They have taken a break for lunch. Maybe cooler heads will prevail afterward. Maybe they won't. What do you think of this pretty extraordinary moment in court? You know what? I thought the judge before had done the light kind of tap on the wrist, fall short of just an admonishment, as we discussed before, that's, uh, you know, reacting in that over-the-top way is just far from decorum in the courtroom, and the judge controls the courtroom and has the ability to do what he needs to have the, tr uh, the trial uh, go smoothly and so the jury isn't prejudiced. But this took it to the next level. The reporting, that uh, the excellent reporting indicates that you could hear saying, Trump saying, this is a witch hunt. And that's obviously audible to the jury. So the antics continue here. What we've seen a lot with these cases with Trump is the courthouse steps seems to be where everything explodes and where we hear uh, a lot of this inflammatory speak. Now we're hearing it in the courtroom from the defense table. So no surprise, just full full disclosure. I've been before Judge Kaplan many, many, many times. No nonsense in that courtroom. So not surprised to see, take a break, everybody go to lunch, and guess what? If this conduct continues, you're out of here. I, I think that will be the next step if it, if it continues down this path. Misty, we've seen uh, former President Trump get hit with gag orders before. It, could you see one uh, being placed on the former president here? It, could it go beyond just him getting kicked out of the courtroom if he continues these kinds of characterizations uh, of E. Jean Carroll? It, it absolutely could. However, because uh, the, that First Amendment right, we've seen the gag orders and they're generally limited uh, to the types of statements that would be potentially harmful or threatening to those in the courtroom. There could be something narrow like that. It wouldn't be a blanket gag order. I don't believe that would be the case, but there certainly could be some limitations outside the courtroom as well, depending on uh, how this continues. Uh, look, I, it seems that his lawyers are not able to control him. And I want to make a point because I heard, of course, we're not in the courtroom. I wish we were to actually see this all unfold. But I did hear in the reporting that the judge said, if this continues, I'm going to kick you out. And Trump said, I love it or I would love it. And I'm wondering, because we've seen this before with especially the civil cases, uh, just in the civil fraud trial that we were covering a week or two ago, is this setting up some sort of appellate type argument uh kicking out of the courtroom he has a right to be there is this going is this a part of a broader strategy as far as how these are going to be attacked after the trial the damages portion is concluded and then it's on appeal i don't know uh but but i do think that was a bit telling with that statement now on the record with the judge so something to think about as this case continues yeah, putting down some markers there. Misty, if you could stand by for us, I want to bring Kara Scannell back into this conversation. Um, Kara, was the jury present for the entirety of this 
incident? I mean, it sounds like clearly if they were, uh, if it was audible enough, they could have heard the part where he's saying it, it is a witch hunt, it really is a con job. Did the judge dismiss the jury before he admonished Trump or, or did they witness this? Oh, no, the jury was out of the courtroom when the judge had this interaction. And this is actually the second time that Carol's attorney had raised concerns today before the judge that Trump was saying things that were audible to them. I'm sitting two rows behind Trump, but he's facing forward. So I just see him speaking to his attorney, but none of us can hear what he is saying because he's facing forward. But, but Carol's lawyer is sitting in front of him, and she said that she could hear what he was saying, things such as witch hunt, it really is a con job. And she raised earlier to the judge that she thought some of these statements could potentially be heard by the jury. The judge didn't take any kind of corrective action. She brought it up again at the break for lunch once the jury had been excused and brought it up to the judge. And so then the judge had an exchange with Trump in which he said that Trump has the right to be present here. That right can be forfeited and it can be forfeited if he is disruptive, which what has been reported to me consists of. And if he disregards court orders, Mr. Trump, I hope I don't have to consider excluding you from the trial. And at that point, Trump threw his hands up at the air, appeared to say something, but no one could really make out what it was that he said. And the judge said, I understand you're probably eager for me to do that. And he said, I know you would. So at that point, they broke for lunch and everyone had left the courtroom. It's not clear if Trump is coming back after the lunch break or if he's going to proceed to his building to give public remarks. Uh, but that is where things were left today after E. Jean Carroll had been testifying on the stand for several hours describing the statements that Trump had made that the other jury had already found to be defamatory, uh, including threats to her life, people wishing that she would be raped, and saying how much it had scared her and threatened her physical safety. Um, so this was Trump. You know, he'd reacted a lot during her testimony, but most of it just seemed to be making statements to his lawyer, which I saw repeatedly. He was passing notes to his lawyer. You know, he glanced over at the jury at one point, but we couldn't hear behind him any of the words that he was saying, but clearly Carol's attorney saying that those words were audible to them sitting in front of him, and they were worried that the jury could also hear that. And Carol, we also want to point out uh, there was a different point earlier in the day where the judge had to reprimand Trump's attorney, Alina Haba. Uh, I, I believe it more than one occasion. Walk us through what happened there. Yeah, there has been tension since yesterday involving Trump's attorney Alina Haba and the judge. Both yesterday and again this morning, she asked the judge if they could not have court on Thursday because Trump has his mother-in-law's funeral that day in Florida. And the judge has previously ruled on that before the trial started. Haba brought it up yesterday. She brought it up again today, saying she thought it was insanely unfair. And the judge saying nothing is stopping Trump from attending his mother-in-law's funeral and nothing is stopping him from coming to court. It's ultimately Trump's choice. Uh, Haba had pressed it again and the judge told her uh, several times, sit down. I've already ruled. We're moving on. We're not arguing about this again. Uh, and there have been several other times where she has objected and she started to argue in court and the judge would cut her off. But, you know, he has also agreed with some of her objections and told Carol to answer the question she was asked and not to just meander and give a story. So, you know, it's, it's not as though he had been leading against Trump's attorney, but there has been a lot more spot between them uh, and certainly you with Trump there in the room Trump having these reactions which the judge is facing Trump he can see what he is doing and he can see his facial expressions better than us reporters who are sitting behind him uh, so you know this though is a judge there's Lewis Kaplan a lot of people say judges are no nonsense he truly is he runs a very tight courtroom uh, and we're, we'll see what more he does about this if Trump does continue to uh, attend the court uh, uh, hearings yeah, he's Boris putting Piana. up some very clear boundaries yeah. there. Karis Ganell, thank you so much uh, from outside of court there in New York.